This film is about what we can do as parents to help our children grow up with healthy teeth. We will look at how what they eat and drink affects their teeth and what we need to do to look after their teeth from the moment the first one appears. Teeth aren't just about chewing food. Healthy teeth affect our ability to talk clearly and are important for our physical appearance and our confidence, especially as they're the part of ourselves we show to the world when we smile. And no parent wants their child to go through the misery of toothache, not to mention having fillings or even having their teeth out. We were referred to the dental hospital and she had to have a general anaesthetic to have three teeth removed. And that was awful. That was really, really horrendous to go through, knowing that that could have been prevented and that shouldn't have happened. Um, yeah, and just to see her when she woke up with, you know, all the blood in her mouth and gauze and she was so disordered, she was screaming and screaming. And it was traumatic for her, it was traumatic for us as parents. Um, but and it needn't have happened. The good news is that tooth decay can be prevented. It's best to get our children into healthy routines right from the start, avoiding any bad habits by helping them enjoy foods and drinks that are good for their teeth. If you learn to look after your milk teeth, you're going to learn to take care of to look after your adult teeth. Even now, sometimes people comment on what a nice smile he has and that makes me feel happy. So let's start by looking at why what we eat and drink is so important. The number one enemy for teeth is sugar. Sugar is the main cause of tooth decay. Every time we eat or drink something sugary, our teeth are under attack. So we need to think about reducing how much sugar we eat and how often we eat it. Avoiding grazing and sticking to three meals and two healthy snacks a day will limit the number of sugar attacks on children's teeth. And as children copy their parents, if we want our children to eat and drink less sugar, we need to do the same. I think the foods that I like, they uh, would have a very important impact on them because they basically copied. I think our diet has changed since having Robin. Um, I think we're a lot more conscious of how much sugar and salt um, are in what we cook. You want your child to see you eating healthy foods so that that's what they're learning, that's what they think the way of doing things is. Our liking for certain foods goes back to our early experiences of eating. Babies tend to have a natural preference for sweet and familiar foods. So an important task when introducing them to solid foods is to help them get used to and enjoy savoury tastes. Yes. At the moment she's definitely um, likes fruit in particular and we have a bit more of a struggle with vegetables. Yeah, we do. But as we say, we keep trying to uh, familiarise her with us. The first time a baby tastes something new, for instance a vegetable, they often pull a face. But this is usually their way of saying, I don't recognise this, rather than I don't like this, so don't be put off. Getting a baby used to vegetables and other savoury foods before introducing fruit and other sweeter foods is one of the best ways of making sure young children don't get a sweet tooth. Another way is not adding anything sweet like honey or sugar to children's foods or their bottle, or dipping dummies in anything sweet. Because of the impact sugar has on our teeth, as well as our weight and general health, there are now guidelines about the maximum amount we should be eating at different ages. Visualising this as sugar cubes gives us an idea of how much this actually is. We're probably all aware that foods like cakes and sweets contain sugar, but there's also a surprising amount of hidden sugar in a lot of common everyday foods. Eating one bowl of the family's favourite breakfast cereal and a single pot of fruit yoghurt or fromage frais is likely to mean a two-year-old has exceeded their daily sugar limit. So let's think about how we can reduce the amount of sugar our children eat. Not having the variety in the house I found has helped. Not having lots of biscuits and chocolates and sweets in the house. If they want something, they will choose something else. 
Swapping foods that are high in sugar with healthier alternatives is a great way of reducing sugar and still enjoying the food we eat. For instance, instead of dried fruit or chocolate as a snack for children, we can offer them vegetable sticks or fresh fruit. Or we could swap a bowl of sugary breakfast cereal with porridge made from plain oats, or a breakfast cereal that doesn't have much added sugar. And instead of commercial fruit yoghurt with added sugar, we can add chopped fresh fruit to plain, unsweetened yoghurt. I was shocked, uh, very, very shocked about how much sugar a, a small can of coal or like fruit juice could contain half of the sugar. Um, to be honest, when I was young, I used to drink a lot of soft drinks, even like especially after PE lessons. And then, um, but after I find that out, I kind of cut them all together. Thinking about what babies and young children are drinking is also important. Breast milk protects teeth, so if you're breastfeeding, carrying on to 12 months and beyond is best for your baby's teeth. Fresh fruit juices and smoothies are often thought of as healthy drinks, which in one way they are because of all the vitamin C they contain. But they are also high in sugar that still attacks our teeth, even though it's natural. Yeah, I didn't bother with any juices or anything because there's just no, no point really. Because I think quite quickly they all go for the sweetest thing naturally. Um, so it was always just water and then when they're old enough, cow's milk in the cup. Sticking to milk and water is by far the safest thing for children's teeth. A small bottle of sweetened fizzy drink or a chocolate milk can contain three times the maximum amount of sugar a two-year-old should be having in a day. So fizzy sweetened drinks, squashes and juice drinks are best avoided altogether. If your baby is bottle fed, it's best for their teeth to introduce a free flow cup from six months old, because the milk doesn't pool around the teeth as it does when the baby sucks from a bottle. And aim for them to stop drinking from a bottle completely by the time they're 12 months old. Once your child is a year old, unless they're still breastfeeding, it's best to offer only water if they wake in the night wanting a drink. This is because there's less saliva in the mouth at night and it's saliva that protects the tooth enamel when we eat or drink. Uh, we only give Robin two drinks, milk and water. She very much enjoys her, mi her milk though, doesn't she? She does enjoy her milk. <laughs> Knowing what's good and what isn't good for our children's teeth is the first step. The next is putting it into practice in the hurly-burly of daily family life and in the face of young children's strongly held opinions of their own. Young children, like the rest of us, want to have some choice and control over what they do, including what they eat and drink. Offering two healthy alternatives, for instance, would you like a breadstick or a carrot for your snack, gives them the chance to choose and can help to avoid a battle of wills. Praise, encouragement, providing healthy choices and being healthy role models ourselves will help children grow up eating healthy food that is kind to their teeth. And a small amount of sweet foods and drinks every now and then will not damage their teeth. In fact, if we are too strict and ban sweet foods and drinks completely, we risk making these foods seem even more appealing to our children. He will ask for sweets and chocolate. Um, but I've always believed it, they've got to have a little because if you totally deny them then I don't think that's going to work they will they will want some so I say okay a little bit of something is is in moderation before we move on let's recap on some of the things we can do as parents to help our children enjoy healthy foods and drinks that will help to avoid tooth decay Wait until babies are happily eating vegetables and other savoury foods before introducing them to fruit and sweeter tastes. Stick to three meals and two healthy snacks a day. Swap sugary snacks for healthier alternatives. Breastfeeding for as long as you and your baby want to is best for your baby's teeth. The only safe drinks for teeth are milk and water. Avoid sugar-sweetened drinks completely. 
start getting your baby used to a free flow cup from six months old, so they're ready to stop drinking from a bottle completely by 12 months old. In part two, we will move on to how we can care for our children's teeth by regular toothbrushing and dental checks. As with many other things, caring for our children's teeth as they get older will be easier if we get into healthy routines right from the moment their first tooth appears. Many parents tell us how starting early helps children get used to having a toothbrush in their mouth so that they're more likely to feel comfortable having their teeth brushed and accept it as a normal part of daily life. I started brushing Hamza's teeth when he was six months. Actually, when the first um, tooth came out, we already we were all excited and when it actually happened. And we, I did start before giving him the toothbrush as a teething toy. So he got used to the idea of putting a teeth, uh, toothbrush into his mouth. With my son, I did with, from brush this, started brushing his teeth from about six months. With my daughter, it was about three months because she got bottom two teeth early. So about four and a half months, she had the toothbrush, brushing her gums, which was quite quite sweet, but that encouraged her for when the teeth was there to know what to kind of hold and how to hold the toothbrush. And it's also getting into the habit. If you don't brush your children's teeth and they're small, they will not do it when they're older. Following some simple steps, helps us to look after young children's teeth and sets them up with healthy toothbrushing routines for when they're older and brushing their own teeth. Start as soon as your baby's first tooth appears. Brush twice a day, last thing before bed and one other time. Parents develop their own strategies for the easiest way to brush their children's teeth. You may find it helpful to position your child so you can gently brush their teeth from behind supporting their head against your body. I also took one of her arms underneath my arm, so we've only got one arm to contend with then, rather than uh, two to, to battle with. Um, although she does have a very bendy head and she decides that she'll put it back and it can be quite hard sometimes. Um, sometimes she's easy, it just depends, I suppose, how we go for the, <laughs> for the day as to what works. Fluoride strengthens tooth enamel. So using fluoride toothpaste will protect your child's teeth from developing cavities or holes. Toothpaste packaging tells you how much fluoride is in the toothpaste. There's no need to use a special baby toothpaste. Using a family toothpaste with between 1,350 to 1,500 parts per million fluoride, written as PPM on the packaging, will provide the best protection for your child. For babies and children under three, just put a smear of toothpaste on the brush. And for children over the age of three, use a pea-sized amount. And because you want the fluoride to stay on the teeth and protect them, encourage your child to spit out after brushing without rinsing with water. Otherwise, you'll end up washing off all the fluoride you've just successfully got onto their teeth. If they're too young to spit out, just wipe any toothpaste from around their mouth with a flannel or towel. Once your child has several teeth, aim for two minutes of toothbrushing and try to include all the surfaces of every tooth, especially the molars at the back. Children are all different. Some will enjoy having their teeth brushed, while others put up a real struggle. It's a real struggle to brush my three-year-old's teeth. Um, there's a lot of screaming and kicking involved. I try and play lots of games. Um, you know, let me count your teeth and um, let's see how wide you can open your mouth. But, you know, it would be easier just to say, oh, forget it then. And then he'd get into a bad routine and learn that that's what he has to do to not have his teeth brushed. And he'd end up with caries like his sister did. So I think because of what happened to her, you know, I'm even more, even if, if it's a mad busy day, everybody has to have brushed the teeth. We need to brush our children's teeth until they are at least seven years old. 
but letting them grab the brush and have a go too helps to make it fun for the child and helps them gradually learn to do it for themselves. While toothbrushing can sometimes be a challenge, there are lots of things we can do to make it easier for our children and ourselves. When I brush her teeth, I do it first and then I give her the toothbrush to do it herself. I um, started giving them other objects to hold whilst they were brushing the teeth. She, she lets me brush them, I brush them first, I put the toothpaste on, I'll, I brush them th first and then I'll pass her so I know they're clean fully, then I pass them back and then she does it herself. Anything that makes toothbrushing fun is going to be helpful. Parents have come up with all sorts of ideas. Um, the song that we use for toothbrushing um, is quite funny. It's from, I think it's from Greece. The, one, the silly one where she does the brush up, brush up, brush up. <laughs> but she likes it so and it works so, you know, and there's nobody watching fortunately. He got one toothbrush he can hold. So we just, uh, because I've got my one, like the one I'm brushing the teeth with because I noticed he will just chew on the one and then obviously if the toothbrush is broken then it's not going to be work as well. So we have two now and he can hold one and he tries to brush my teeth and then I brush his teeth and um, we sing songs, we always sing songs so yeah this is probably the way we do it. Even if toothbrushing isn't perfect, some brushing is always better than none. Every little bit of brushing you're able to do will get some fluoride onto your child's teeth that will protect them from tooth decay and the need for fillings. Another good habit to get into is regular visits to a dental practice. This means that any problems will be picked up early. And from the age of three, your child can have fluoride varnish put onto their teeth twice a year, which will give them even more protection from tooth decay. For children at high risk of developing decay, fluoride varnish can be applied more frequently and from a younger age. I registered my child at the dentist um, from such an early age because um, I, I wanted her to get used to going, um, to check that the smells and the sounds become familiar, um, that there's, that, you know, that there's no, there's nothing scary about going then. It'll be happy, it'll be an enjoyable visit and that's what it should be like for, for, for the children really. So. I think that was my main motivation, that it, uh, it keeps her happy when she goes. Taking your child to a dental practice from an early age will mean that they get used to being there and will give you the opportunity to get to know the dental team and chat about the best ways of looking after your children's teeth. So let's look back at some of the key messages about brushing babies and young children's teeth. Start as soon as the first tooth appears. Brush twice a day with fluoride toothpaste, a smear for babies and under threes, and a pea-sized amount for children over three. Make it fun. Aim for two minutes brushing. Spit, don't rinse. Take your child for regular dental checkups. Thank you to all the families who've taken part in this film. <laughs>